As the coronation of Charles III is edging ever closer, I wanted to talk a little bit about the aristocracy, specifically the British aristocracy, which pretty much follow the same rules as the rest of Europe. Underneath the king, the queen, the princess and the princes, the royal dukes and the royal family, you get the next in the pile. The dukes, the marquis, the earl, the viscount, and then the barons. That is all. That's the peerage. But I suppose you could also add in the baronets and I suppose maybe the people who have been personally knighted or damed. But the last two, the baronets and the dames and the knights, aren't part of the peerage. <laughs> Dukes. They are the highest on the rung of the peerage. This is Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington, who gained his dukedom through beating Napoleon Bonaparte. Today, the title continues on with the ninth Duke, Duke Charles. Here you can see the first Duke of Wellington in his coronation robes. The robes that he would have worn to the coronation of a new British monarch, where he would have been allowed to don the ducal coronet. Interestingly enough, in the Queen's coronation, the aristocrats, the peers, they were present and Charles being a little bit different, he's decided to not invite absolute everyone and be a little bit more streamlined. So it's doubtful that we will see as many peers in the actual coronation. However, for the parliament opening, each and every single one of the peers gets to wear parliamentary robes. On the right hand side, you can see the Duke has four stripes indicating their rank. When you meet a Duke and they are married, the Duchess is the wife of the Duke. But you don't simply call them by their first name or the Duke or the Duchess. They are styled and their style is your grace. Next in line of the peerage is the Marquis. This is Rufus Isaac, the first Marquis of Reading, the newest title for Marquis. He was created Marquis in 1926 by George V for his political and diplomatic missions when he became Viceroy of India. This is a coronation robe for a Marquis and his wife as well, and you can see their coronet. It's less ornate compared to a ducal one. You'll notice that this is a theme. The lower down the period you go, the less decorative the robes are. The opening parliament robes for a Marquis have three and a half stripes. Here, the style for a Marquis is Lord and Lady for his wife. The next in line are the Earls. This is probably the most famous Earl in England, Charles Spencer, the Earl Spencer. He is the uncle to Prince William and Prince Harry because of his sister, their mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. Here is the coronation robes for an Earl, as long with the coronet of an Earl, less decorative. The parliamentary robes, however, have three stripes for an Earl. When an earl marries, she doesn't become an earl less because that just sounds weird. Instead, she becomes a countess because an earl and a count are at the same level and they are also styled as lord and lady. The Viscount. This is William Richard Morris, the first Viscount Nuffield. He was first given an OBE, Order of the British Empire, then created a baronet and then a baron and then finally a Viscount in 1938 because of his philanthropy after earning millions by creating Morris Motors, the famous company that would go on to create the Mini. Here is a Viscount's coronation robe and coronet, a little bit less decorative. And the parliamentary robe only has two and a half stripes for a Viscount, so they're not as important as the ones above. Their styles are Lord and Lady. The Barons. This is Delavelle Astley, the 23rd Baron of Hastings, and he is best known for playing Cameron Fraser in the BBC radio show The Arches. Here are the coronation robes for a Baron, along with the coronet for a Baron, and as you can see, there are only two stripes for a Baron in the parliamentary robes. They are also styled Lord and Lady. Now, to make things even more confusing, females can't exactly hold titles in the UK, but they can become life peers through Parliament, just a weird way that the British Parliament is set up through the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Titles are hereditary through male preference primogeniture. Therefore, if a peer dies with no male heir, the title dies with them. Now, to make things even more confusing, many peers hold a number of titles, not just one, and their eldest son can use their next title down the line as a title of courtesy. For example, the Earl of Spencer, 
His son, Louis, is known as Viscount Althorpe because of their house. It's called Althorpe, and it is the next title down the line for the Earl of Spencer. Finally, there are two other titles which are not in the peerage, but I want to talk about them anyway. The Baronet, known throughout Europe as hereditary knights. They are often considered noble titles. Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones' father, in fact, is the 15th Baronet of Harrington. Therefore, Kit's elder brother will inherit the Baronet one day when their father dies. They are styled as Sir, and their wives are styled as Ladies. Last but not least, there are the knights and dames. Now, this can be absolutely anybody. Anybody could be knighted or damed, depending on what you do, of course. You could be knighted or damed into an ancient order of knighthood, like that of the Order of Bath, the Order of the Thistle, or the Order of Garter, such as Winston Churchill was, who, Zunkel, was actually a duke, by the way. Then there are knight bachelors, such as that of Lewis Hamilton. And then there are the order of companions of honor, such as Dame Judy Dench. Knights are known as Sir, and Dames are known as Madame or My Lady. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed that. Please like, comment, and subscribe. The more you know.